Hey everybody, welcome back to another video and today we have a look at how we make our Nuxt config aware of the environment. So if we're in development or production or maybe even testing. So yes, you should write tests and we'll have a look into that straight away now. Okay, 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 don't worry. We don't look into the whole testing scenario, like testing will be for another video. Today we'll have a look at how we can make our Nuxt config TS or JS if you don't use, don't use TypeScript environment aware to say, okay, are we in development? Then maybe do this and in test mode, do that. And in production, do something totally different. So as usual, I have a little demo application, which is more or less empty. You will see that in a bit and we'll develop the thing right away on the go. Let's get started. All right. As I mentioned, I told you this application is really minimal and we have nothing in the next config. We just have one app that view that says, check the tab title. And right now, well, not much is happening. Like if we check out the browser now, we'll exactly see uh, this. Check the tab title. And that's it. The tab title is local 3000. Um, okay, fine. But maybe we can change that. Maybe we can make sure that the tab title is different in production and in development. And we also have some default. So let's get started with this. To set a tab title, we can, for example, in here, use use hat and set things. But as we don't really want to touch the application level code and just want to do things in the config itself, maybe just do it here. So we can use the app key here. And of course there's an object in here and here we have the hat option. And in app.hat we can set a title. So we can say uh, my application, right? And another thing we can do is we can define a title template. Very important though, we can't define a function here because the next config should be serializable. But luckily title template can also be written as a string where $s is the string to replace. And then we can write, I don't know, let's do shameless plug here, youtube.com slash at my name. Okay. And we save this. Let's have a look what it actually does to our browser tab right away. Okay. That worked. Nice. We see my application here and then YouTube slash at and oh, well, the shameless plug didn't go as well. Anyway, no problem. So we did that, but now it's the same everywhere. So that's not exactly what we want. We want to do that differently in production and in development. So this is our default and let's change this in the code again. So what we could do now is we could say, oh yeah, you know what the title, if process.env, that node env is development, then do something like set that, otherwise set something else. But this doesn't feel really nice. So let's, let's not do that. Ideally, we don't want to use any kind of process.env things anyway. Um, also not in the runtime config, but that's the topic of another video, which you might have seen already. If not, check it out. It's up here somewhere. And we we have another option. Nux provides us with, with a goodie here. So this applies also to the whole Nux config, which we'll do in a second. This is not only for the titles, just the easiest example I could uh, come up with. What we can do here, we have lots of other top level keys. So if we check what we have, like we have something like build and there's some more. If we use the dollar sign, we see, oh wait, dollar development C12 input config. We'll come to that in a bit. Dollar production, dollar tests. And yeah, it's, it's exactly what you're thinking. If you use dollar development in here, we have the option to define a whole new next config. And that will be used in development and merged with the defaults. So what we can do here is we say app, then head, and then just set the title to say dev, right? If we save that now and move back in the browser after next reload, well, exactly. You guess already what we will see. It's happening, dev, right here. And you see that the title template that we didn't touch at all will just be taken over from the previous next config. So from the default one. And that's really lovely, right? So as soon as we're in dev node, we get different information. This is especially helpful if you have scenarios like, oh, I only want to apply a cache, for example, in production and not in the dev environment, especially often it's like, oh yeah, I have some route rules, but there's an issue. I always have to do a hard reload or I have to restart the server to delete some stuff. Don't worry. You can just set them only in production and you're good. Just make sure, sure to actually test them, right? <laughs> that would be helpful. So. Yeah, we set stuff in development now, but we haven't tried it with production yet. So let's, let's go for that and do that. The same way as we set it in development, we can also set it in production. 
So let's do it. App had title and here we just say prod, right? So far so good. How do we test that now though? Because if we have our server running, well, that's in development mode. So one thing we could do is we do node and equals production and then run it. But what you will see is straight away a warning here saying, changing node and from production to development to avoid unintended behavior. And that's a protection, so we don't want you to opt into the wrong node env, so some packages behave in a weird way. So that won't work. The same idea, by the way, if we run it in production, so we do pmpm build, but we do like node env equals development here, or anything else. This will also lead us to a warning the other way around, right? By saying, changing node env from development back to production. So the suggestion here is don't go for that, because you would opt out of lots of things, things will break. That's why we set it back. But instead, what I just did is I'm running the pnpm build command without setting any node env because it's set to production automatically. And now we have the server up and running. I'll just copy the command here, put it in here, and the server's running. So let's see how our production side looks like now. And it is exactly as we planned. Now it says prod here, and we're good to go. And the best part is, once again, this is something that works for all the settings in the Nuxt config. It can be runtime config, it can be route rules, it can be all the things that you might imagine. So no weird reason to check process, node, and development anymore. It works way easier and a little bit more descriptive and declarative. The best part is, um, we'll also have a look now how that works under the hood. So why is it actually happening? How does that replicate and is there a package doing that or is it Nux itself? To take a deeper look, we have to dig into one of the many UnJS packages because of course this behavior is not implemented in the core of Nux. No, it is also useful for lots of other applications that are related to configuration, which is what the C12 here stands for, another numeronym like ITN, A11Y and so on and so on. So if you take a look at that C12 package, we see it as a smart configuration loader, which also loads the Nuxt and Nitro configuration, and has lots of lots of options that are all really useful. Um, I don't want to dive too deep into these, but we'll jump into the override with environment-specific configuration part. This is the interesting part for us here when we talk about environment-specific configs, right? So we have exactly this defined, that users can set up their env and their configs based on dollar test, development, production. And yes, there's even a way to say, hey, we use some custom ends, but they have to be supported by the framework, right? And the best part is C12 actually takes an env name option to check. So if you click here, we see, okay, by default, it uses process env node env, right? But apparently there's also a way to change that, to say to C12, hey, don't look at node env, maybe look at uh, app env or whatever you want to set. Or you can even disable that if you want to. The only thing though, you can't set this env name thingy in the Nux config because otherwise you have that chicken egg problem. Well, C12 is loading the Nux config with a certain setting and can't take it out of there. So if you really want to look for a different uh, env, you might have to look into Nux CLI and figure out how to change it there, apply a patch, or maybe there will be an option later on. We will see. Just very important, technically it is possible to also look for other things. And that's the tiny summary here. Now we know, okay, we don't have to check for uh, the node env in the config anymore. We can do it very descriptive by saying dollar development, dollar production, or dollar test. It might also be super helpful for your end-to-end uh, -end tests or for your unit tests to say, okay, hey, can we mock that API endpoint in that case? I don't want the actual API endpoint. There should just be something to return. Or, hey, I want to change that runtime config value to a set certain default uh, or set the base URL of the application. These are just some ideas from the top of my head where it could be very useful. So now it's your turn. Go ahead, implement it, and let me know what you use it for, where you think, oh, that might be nifty. I'm really curious for use cases, and as usual, if you have questions, any feedback, comment down below. I'm reading all of them, trying to answer as soon as possible. Right now, still have to do a little bit of thesis work, but next week it will be done. Until then, forks. Uh until then, folks, have a look at all the other videos on the channel and see you soon. Happy hacking.